So tell me about your first restaurant. Um, it was quite the adventure for you, right? Yes. In fact, uh, uh, the very first restaurant that I owned was uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, by accident because I'd worked for my relatives and decided I was going to quit. I was going to work for them. I said to my mom, I'm never going to work in a restaurant again, especially not for families. I mean, it's ridiculous. The hours are crazy. So I, I took a little trip to Europe, put a little hammer sack over my shoulder, and off I went. And I came back seven months later, and I, I just I, 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 I experienced so much food in Europe. Europe and the, uh, the French and the Italians and they I grew up with that in, in South Africa because when um, uh, uh, the natural resources in South Africa were discovered like gold and diamond and platinum and uranium mm. uh, Europe just like swarmed onto the South African coast and so we grew up with all these cultures and now here I am in Europe tasting all of these things so when I came back after that seven months later I said you know what I think I really want to pursue the restaurant industry and you know I, I, I had the art of the smell and I remember first things you know when you when you when you look back and you say what are the first things I can recollect as as like I'm on this earth some some kids will remember throwing balls or riding a bicycle I remember planting little seeds in our backyard and growing trees and when I grew up uh, I, that was about uh, three or four years old and by the time I was 12 I had a peach tree a pear tree a plum tree in my backyard I was growing mint and I think it was just in my my blood and in because of, of being in the kitchen for the first two years so uh, I, um, I applied to this job and uh, I met this guy his name is Mike and um, I, it was a 6.30 interview in the morning and I'm like why are you interviewing me at 6.30 in the morning we'll be we interviewed for about two hours and he said so you really think you can manage a restaurant and I was like 19 I was like there's no way I can manage a restaurant right so he I said yes you know being <laughs> confident so he opens the drawer and he so wait, takes no you lied right <laughs> yes of course of course I mean you know, I wanted the job you know that's all I needed a job right so he took out a set of keys and threw it on the desk he says there's the keys to the uh, restaurant and he gave me the address he says you're the manager go open and I said right now he said you want the job I said yes he says well there you go well I have never experienced anything so intimidating in my life. I took the keys, went over there. There were eight people standing outside waiting for me to open the door. I opened the door. The alarm went off. I mean, it was, I mean, I was like, it was an impossible thing for me to overcome. And then as the day progressed, uh, you know, the, the head waiter came and then there was assistant manager and there were a few other people. They helped me get through the first week. It was oh, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I will never lie again in my life. <laughs> But anyway, I, I became very successful, helped him uh, build a, his location there. And then um, uh, he took me, um, about six months later, he came up to me and he said to me, uh, I want to show you something. So I got in the car with him and we went up to this uh, really nice area uh, of, of uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. And he showed me this restaurant. It was called the Great American Hamburger Disaster. I was like, why would, why would you call a restaurant that, right? Well, anyway, it was a disaster. They went out of business and he said to me, would you like to purchase this as a franchise for me? And I said, well, I don't have any money. Mm. He said, all it's going to take is $10,000. And I said, well, uh, let me go ask my mom. So I went to my mom, and that's all she had. It was her life savings. And I mean, I pleaded with my mother, and she didn't want to part. But I just, you know, it's that story when you keep pestering and pestering. Finally, you just say, oh, well, take it. You know. Yeah. So she helped me. She gave me the money, and I opened my very first restaurant when I was 21. And I was so successful that Mike was sending people to me to train for franchising. Wow. And so after the second person I trained for franchising, I said, I'm not doing this anymore unless you make me a partner. So I was about 22, 23. And he said, we'll sell, we'll sell your franchise. You can partner with me. You can be the, the operations director of the company. And you can be the one who opens all the restaurants. So that's how my restaurant career began. And I started taking the plans, uh, hiring the general contractors and um, doing a turnkey people would buy our franchise and I'd hand it to them and go open another one and in the process I learned all the ways and ideas and cooking and so on so I didn't feel like at, at that stage that I was really like a chef yeah. I was more like a restaurant operator and then as time progressed I would create dishes I would come up with new menu items and it just evolved and everyone's saying man this is great your food's amazing never been to school Wow. So it was, I, in fact, I, I went to the, the, the best school money can buy. It's free. The, the name of the, the, the art institute is Joycey Matoitoy. <laughs> That was my mate. It was on her back. <laughs> so, so that's what happened. Yeah. Well, yeah, so your mate taught you well, right? Oh, yes, yeah. she did. <laughs>